Fire. Welcome back, Shinners. Welcome back to the Shindig podcast, where we get under the skin of the trials, trials community. community. I'm Tom Hutley. And I'm Matt Pengelly. And we are here with... Is he a trials rider? He's got a seat. He's got he? a seat on his bike, I heard. <laughs> no, he's uh, another legendary rider. He's been Long in the time rider. For longer than most people have been... Riding their bikes. It's Mr. John Shrewsbury. Yes. How you doing, man? How's it going? All good. How are you two? You all right? Oh, loving life. Yeah, yeah. mate. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah, we're good. Keeping busy. Um, sadly, didn't get on our bikes this weekend because of the cold. Yeah, it's uh, in Wales. It's a, I don't know. It's like the weather's not stopped. It's not stopped raining, yeah. snowing, <laughs> on and off. It's just... Dying. Dying. It's it hard was... to get on the bikes right now. Well, it's the coldest know, week. It we need it. Yeah. In London since 1995. The coldest week I read earlier. Yeah. Wow. So we've got a perfectly good excuse, but <laughs> perfect yeah. way to be holed up and be doing this podcast. So yeah. this, is, this is what it's all and, about. Um, I think you just answered it for us. I was going to ask where you are in the world. You say you're in Wales right now. I'm in South Wales. Yes. South Wales. How did yeah. you end up there? It's what a random is this the first the time we've yeah. done an interview in a different country? <laughs> Yeah, technically, <laughs> Wales is a different country. Yeah, you get a different driving license when you're in Wales, yeah. don't you? Yeah, yeah. It's you don't have to pay to get in now, which is good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and are you in the land of Wales? And um, are you? You've always lived in Wales. Do you want to? Do you want to give us a little bit about your your journey of positioning at all? Um, well, as I've got older, yes, I have. Uh, but like, start off, born in Dagenham. Essex. So I thought it was you know, pronounced Dargenham. Dargenham. That's a, that's, a, that's a posh part of Essex, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> um, Go on, say the land of Essex. Uh, <laughs> yeah, kind of uh, grew up there for till I was about probably eight, and then I got into bikes. Uh, I think I had a BMX, which is a totally different sport. Yeah, a BMX <laughs> there. <laughs> I heard. So it's, yeah, well, nice. discipline. I'm gonna yeah. put that in. Um, put that in my notes later on. That we've got to ask him about that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Go on. That's where the seat kind of started. <laughs> got you. Yeah. Kind go. of stuck. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, lived there till then, and then moved to Cambridgeshire, which was a bit of a step up. <laughs> yeah, beautiful part of the maybe, world. Maybe. Uh, and then lived there for a couple of years as well as getting into trials. So I was in school, met a load of friends. So that was in, that, you were in Cambridgeshire now and that's the yeah. area you got into trials. Yeah. Yeah. That's when I got into trials. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think I went into a news agents one day and just found like MBUK or saw yeah. people yeah. trying to do this kind of sport. And then a few of us started getting bikes um, around that time. And then it's just carried on from there. And then, yeah. A few years later, moved to Porthcawl, and it's just been the perfect place to ride, really. Caught the bug, didn't you? Never. So, yeah. You've always... Uh... I've got to ask you, if you said carried on from there. I mean, have you ridden... You've ridden progressively all the way through, right? You Have you yeah. ever had a break from trials? No. <laughs> yeah, see? That's... I mean, you stick to what you're good at, right? <laughs> yeah, I think that's the thing. A lot of people have, like, either never had, like, a family or anything later on. They've just quit and just gone into like road cycling mountain biking as they got older yeah and maybe had a family but like i'm not at that stage just yet i am at that stage but not <laughs> is right that a now. sore subject right now yeah. <laughs> we yeah. won't get into um, that you heard it here folks like i'm i am into mountain bikes now because yeah. so many of the boys i think it was mainly down to maybe a few guys like uh, that I knew that were local, like James Porter, he got more into mountain biking and road cycling. Course, yeah. And I kind of like got on that at the same time as him. So when I wasn't really interested in mountain bikes at all, when I was into trials, when I first got into it, I was like, yeah, yeah. you get a DVD and it's all downhill racing. And it's like, I want to see that section of that person doing trials. Skip that's to in it, it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, but now it's kind of turned around and it's like, Oh, I'm doing a bit of both now. So well, when so you get that. That's why I think trials is the foundation yeah. of the mountain biking side now. If anything. Yeah. Well, yeah. Isn't I it think... weird, like how mountain biking's like, and even road biking to an extent, is the way more dangerous than trials? Yes and no. Yes, I, I can yeah, say that. Yes and no. Because <laughs> think... you have momentum and speed involved, and when you yeah. have speed, that's just amp 
So that's perhaps multiplies your, injuries. With road bikes, there's obviously external variables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> contributing it's to a lot, cars. I think there's a lot of balance there with road bikes because the wheels are so skinny, but yeah. you just don't want to, you know, wheelie it too much. You just want to... Yeah, well, I think most of the newbies right. anyway, they're just like, just keep pedaling and I'll be fine. You know, that's yeah. not something you can do in trials. That is yeah. definitely but I think something you can do. A lot of the technical part of mountain biking, like you, you're going down a little bit of like wooded area really fast, all the, you know, the roots the mud and all that all that technical side helps quite a lot with from trials yeah yeah so i think that's why so many trials riders have gone to mountain biking and kind of quick trials at a point that they're like oh i can just do this it's easier for me to go out from the house instead of putting a bike in a car and then go do trials so, yeah yeah well they do the the basics of uh, what a trials bike could do on a mountain yeah. bike then becomes more impressive whatever you just hop yeah. off a bench you yeah. know, trials bike that doesn't look anywhere sort of near impressive. Yeah. Now you yeah. haven't given up trials. You've always no. uh, had a trials bike. How yeah. how many years have you actually been riding then, John? I actually figured this out like five minutes ago. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely started trials around 13, 14 years old. So yeah. it's around twenty years. Twenty years. Yeah. So I was, I was Andre Burton out. league that is he's been yeah for 20 yeah years. oh yeah it's definitely around him <laughs> yeah his time um but yeah it's definitely then because I was trying to figure out when I had the certain bikes because I had a trials bike my first ever trials bike you were probably gonna ask me that that's question. exactly yeah go yeah. ahead um was handsome dog rock star what i, I don't even know she was not <laughs> what guys what that? someone's put a link in the comments or something <laughs> or a picture i want to know what that is if you had one yeah. of these if you it know was, what it is it was like it looked like a 14 inch like basic kind of frame steel frame fully right. white it had a built-in dropout not one that you could take on and off like hanger yeah um it ha it was all white with stickers um and it had these like Three piece red forks, like you'd have the identity forks, like on a jump yeah, bike. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, they'd be straight and then straight, like a T kind of yeah. or fork yeah, shape, yeah. like they are. Um, but they were bright red. So I was like, oh, I want well. to see this, man. Yeah, but you could see it in MBUK, and it was on offer. It was like, oh, it's not five nine nine; it's two nine nine on offer or something. I was like, Dad, I want that. <laughs> it was something like that. Yeah. So I had that for Christmas one year and then rode that for years. I think I probably changed the forks out to suspension at some point because oh. it was around that time of like Jeff Lenoski, Ryan Leach, all of those were running suspension forks yes. yeah. and V brakes and Ryan all that Leach, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Um and then I think it kind of got on to the point that I was watching more of like Eddie Tung, Chris Agrig um riding and it was like oh I want a new bike again. So I think I got like um, a CBR jump frame. It was I like, remember. Oh them. yeah, yeah. Because that it was <laughs> that was like a G. That was reminding me of a GT Ruckus, wasn't it? It's just like a dirt jump slash. It was like frame. Frame. really yeah. low bottom bracket, fully silver. It was hanging up in a bike shop in I think Cambridge somewhere. Mm. Richardson Cycles, I think it was called. They used to have a few shops around Huntingdon and. St. Yeah. Ives or somewhere. Yeah. And it was just hanging there. I was like, I want that frame and I want the forks that are next to it. So like full on chrome silver. Oh. And I was like, I want those. So yeah. I built that up, bought some uh, Magira silver brakes that you could get at the time. So it was just all silver. I think I had a cheap pair of Mavic wheels that you buy from like the bike show, you know, if you had the bike shows yeah, back yeah. in the day, early yeah. 2000, I used to go to them all the time uh, and just whack them on. And that was my second trials bike. So um, it all after, kicked off very quickly from there and just progressed it, and evolved. Yeah. Um, well, you wanted the bikes that the people you were watching while you were growing up, you wanted something similar. So you tried to make the bike look, kind of like theirs but it wasn't yeah. theirs yeah like, it's always probably... like i want want their bike but yes. you never quite get that so you exactly sort of... exactly that but you know as time went on you got bikes which people were actually riding i think later on i had 
Brissers, if you remember them, they were like American Brissers B26D and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 There was the they much had... fabled mod one. I mean, I can't yeah. remember seeing Oh, that Nelson Reese, was it? I think his name was. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to... Oh, I don't have to know. That. No, he doesn't know. No, <laughs> well, we're just... I feel like when like parents are like talking about like financial matters and you just hear blah 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 like that's what I'm getting. I'm there like, will be some older riders listening now. There was like, Whoa. well, <laughs> this guy if, if you knew Nelson Reese, he rode twenty inch yeah. and he was at the bike show and he went backwards across a gap at the bike show on these two massive pillars or wow. something. It was the, that... it, it, the the video is online. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, definitely definitely send me a link. <laughs> I, I want to be yeah. checking that one out, but. But, of yeah. that quite a a long long journey of trials that's 20 years is a long time yeah um as we've quite said i think he has a seat right we've we've established this yeah you've got a seat no have you always trials <laughs> bike, you got a seat <laughs> have you always had a seat on your trials bike well from the bikes that i've had you've had some kind of plastic <laughs> like some kind of sitting I went for a phase once where i didn't have a seed but yeah <laughs> but it, was, it, was, it, it was just a phase i had to have something there sticking out <laughs> yeah i had this i had this phase which just had a plastic seat do you get it yeah. uh, there was a phase yeah, um, sorry yeah. i'll go home well when <laughs> i had the when i had the brisses they kind of didn't yeah. have they had a very low curved frame and you know those little plastic seats that had a little bit of seat post sticking out yeah. and you just shove that in. Yeah. I had a brisser with the yeah. straight bars, the long stem, all of that. And I had this little seat there and that's what I had. And then it wasn't until probably, I don't know, I even had a Planet X as well. That was another one. that went Another straight classic that. that was really um, early days of it, you know. I think before that I had an Echo ES3 which was from a company X Street that started bringing in Echo many years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, well, another that's, one that's like another one. Like, we need to check <laughs> that out. Matt, yeah. write this down. Like, yeah, like, quick, quick, we need quick. to do our homework yeah. um, next time. Um, but well, then, yeah, it kind of went from having a Planet X, which was like the closest bike to looking like a street frame, like mm. looking like a what the street bikes are like now, like that yeah. style of frame. Um, and then it kind of went on to... Uh, smaller wheeled bikes. So and that's when twenty four sort of yeah. came out. So and my yeah, understanding wow. is actually you were one of the first people to actually get what is now the common um, street sort of Danny McCaskill geometry twenty four inch bike. But you were one of the first people in this country to kind of get on one. I believe yeah. so. Right. Um, I had. Like me and Gavin Bed, we had like a really good relationship with Martin Ashton and Martin Hawes at the time. And Gavin started to get frames through him. Mm. Uh, the, the very first Mark won Ashton Justice, which was like a silver frame. And then. Um, Nice looking frame, actually. I would stir one there. Yeah, then, you can see again. that on the, the retro bike on Instagram. They've, yeah. they've put one up. Um, and then recently. after, I think, a few years, uh, or not that long, um, there was a guy called Tim Pratt that had a Ashton Justice and he rode it at a bike show. Oh, my goodness. Do you know what? Just, I've forgotten about Tim Pratt. Do you, do you remember <laughs> Tim Pratt, the rider? Pretty good. What, what happened to Tim Pratt? Does anyone know really? where it, you suddenly? I know we've just quickly gone off topic there, but he was a really good rider. I don't know if you remember what he was in Gat as well. Yeah, wasn't that, he? yeah, he done Nardi Gap in London yeah, across those pillars. He's got a little section in yeah. the first um, one, I think. Sorry, um, you've just, yeah, I yeah. forgot no, about that name. Fine, like, fine. could you I'm do we know what? I'm bringing out names yeah. which you've got to find out about. <laughs> Is he still, um, have you spoken to Tim? Do you know where I, he's doing? It was quite a few years later because he ended up riding like around the same time as the Ashton Eddie tongue frame came around mm. when the first production came out, he had one of those after he had an Ashton justice. Yeah. So around the time when the uh, Ashton justice came around, the Eddie tongue bike was just about to be coming out. I had like a prototype off Martin, mm. which was a fully built bike. It looked like it just been put together with whatever, Spares, I made it. Yeah. I, I made it my own. Yeah, um, I think it had V brakes front and rear, which was probably the last time I ever ran V brakes on. <laughs> it seems to be a new car. thing nowadays, but yeah, it was a back yeah. in the day, old school. Yeah, yeah, but it was like, oh wow, 
I got this to test out for him. And then not long after that, I think I had the very first Eddie Tongue production model. And then from there on, I was riding a 24 inch trials bike, just like Eddie Tongue was. Yeah. But it was his bike. Um, and then not that long after that first one, I went on to another one. I think I had two of them. And then I had a Leeson 24. I had that made through Clive Leeson. Leeson bikes, Leeson. classic. Because so I remember Rich they, Pearson on the was also yeah. on was sponsored by them back in that day. Yeah, that was... I was on. I think I was on the same bike around the same time as him because he had a few crazy bikes. Yeah, he did yeah. had that one. I, I picture the sort of frame that you had, and then later on he got another one which just looked like crazy yeah. design yeah. of like scaffolding. Yeah, he wiring. had a really short wheelbase one, I think, which was dual disc. And I think I had my 24 at the time, mm. uh, which was like a brown color, like chocolate brown color frame. I've got some pictures somewhere of that after dig them out when it was brand new and when I first ever had it. Um, and then I think Rich had a longer wheelbase Leeson and then I had a 26 inch Leeson. So I kind of went back to 26 for a little while just to try it. Um, and then I think later on I was just back and forth with different wheel sizes because I was doing competitions mm. as well as um, riding street. So I wanted to combine both. So, and that's a hard yeah. thing to do. It's something that we well, definitely wanted to touch a little bit yeah. on with you. Quite recently, um, Faction, who will have just come out after this one has... Yeah. Release Faction did a, a competition up at Charlie Rolls's. It's um, not one of the only competitions last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was one. the only competition last year, actually. I must say, yeah, yeah, it would have been. This was only ones up north, like with the. I'll say the only, maybe whatever. the only one in uh, in the south of England. We'll go with that, hundred yeah. <laughs> um, uh, percent. Bike Trial Academy, and you actually won on your I... trials bike with a seat, <laughs> which effectively yeah. makes you British champion of 2020 in in <laughs> in, um, in blue category. In yeah. cadet, is that what blue is? Cadet? No, no, oh, no, cadet, is, no. probably not. It's just, it's just, just offended blue. a lot. I of feel Charles more ashamed that I was in that category than anything higher than that. Really, I think well, a, you had a seat. So <laughs> got you a know, question like, from Sean Goddard on this. Actually, what what was it? Yeah, Sean, Sean did ask. Um, let's just try and dig that one out quickly and yeah. see. Uh, it was really important. Oh yeah, what was it? Well, should you have gone into red? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say, yeah, I should have done, but I don't think I would no. have enjoyed it as much. See, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the different, the differences between the categories were so big. I did yeah. red. Uh, yeah. Extremely. I, I don't, it's so different. On Did you maybe get over that first bike. rock that was that? that pointed upwards <laughs> I, I did with a dab i did with a dab eventually but it's one of those things what i, what I mean by is you you would have been restricted yeah surely based on your geometry of your bike i think from early 2000s i started out doing comps it's 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 a totally different like if you've just like got on a trials bike started doing the basics and all that and then you go to a comp it's like i need more training because I wasn't ready for all of that. I went straight in at the deep end, straight into red category. Mm. At that time, I was like, I'm struggling a lot. It took me probably another year or two later to start being in the top 10 in expert and actually getting close enough to- Somewhere where you were happy. Yeah, or... and it's, it's all about getting to the right point in a section mm. that you know, oh, I can get from that section to that section, that part of that section as quick as I can, and then get to the hard part and then have more time to get over that yeah. hard bit. It's a bit like what, you know, when you're watching Jack, he'll probably get over everything just like that and probably get to the end to the hardest part. He's still got time. He'll get over it and then out yeah. the gate. Yeah, or spend 30 seconds doing four or five gates and yeah. then 30 seconds on one gate. That sort yeah. of, yeah. 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 So, yeah, competitions nowadays, like I will just go and do a category below what I used to do because I know I can get through that. But I might look a bit stupid on the podium because I've got these two kids. Well, genuinely, you're going to enjoy it. <laughs> I like it, though, because you said I'm... you've done it because you enjoy it. But is, it people yeah, get their enjoyment it. differently from trials. Yeah. See, you yeah. you wouldn't have been able to enjoy blue. You did red. I'd have been, yeah. Knowing full well that it was a huge challenge, 
you yeah. really need the challenge element and for you that is what you find enjoyable whereas for you and i think especially your style of riding john yeah if this is my observation it's, anyway you you seek enjoyment in being able to complete like a whole line right yeah if you can make it look fun and look good at the same time and you actually traveled that far to do that comp and you want to have a good day out of yeah. it do what you think is easier for you because i did have a lad mm -hmm. who was meant to come with us that weekend i really wish he did come yeah. his name's james Parr, and <laughs> He is an incredible cyclist mm. from when I've know, known him since. And he just needs to ride a bit more, but actually go for it and actually come to a comp and just have one good day out. But it's it's some, it's some kind of like that. It's like, oh, I would have been like, probably before I did comps, mm. I wouldn't enjoy it. Why would I go there if I'm not going to be able to do well? You know, But that's the whole point of a competition. You go there to find out how well you will do. Yeah, that's the same for every kid that's going out there and probably going with his father. He's like, oh, I don't know if I can get through that. Well, you've been training a lot. Why can't you get through it? You must yeah. be able to. If you can, oh yeah, don't do don't worry about thinking whether you can or can't. Yeah, it's about exactly. being there and going. I'm going to try. Sort of exactly. Thing. I think um, like probably when we were at that competition, I was trying to tell people do it this way, do it that way, because you will succeed through that little part of the section. Yeah. You just need to try it that way. And they did do it, mm. you know, and it's the same for anyone, but you're all egging each other on to try and help get through that section, but you just go. Yeah. Like, and ability. There is obviously competition between everyone that's there, you know, but we're really, we're all sort of helping each other out. Yeah. A lot of the time I I've never really seen it being, but also yeah. as well for people to kind of just turn up to competitions as more of a social kind of a different riding environment. Yeah. It's good to go for, I'm riding for myself, so I'm just going to come yeah. riding whatever I get to seek the most enjoyment, you know? Well, that's it. Like, it's I, that... kind of, I kind of set the bike up for the competition that day. I put a longer stem on. I put a more treaded tire oh, on. Oh, yeah, you did actually like, change your tires. I did notice. I, yeah. I probably did that because I knew what i used to do mm, back then yeah. i was like right i'll put the lightest tires on which i know i'm familiar with and i've known for years back in the day but i don't use them every time i go riding yeah. and i'll put a longer stem on just because i've got that bit of leverage compared to a proper trials bike yeah. which is longer mm. um and it did help it did benefit quite a lot from that day which helped but... sorry what did you just say a proper trials bike did he just <laughs> did he just say that out yeah. loud <laughs> No, I mean, what's we're all trials, trials bikes. bikes. What's the definition of that then? We're all <laughs> trials bikes here, but, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do love that. The factor in that trials yeah. has this every element of, it's the only sport to me that has every element of yeah. biking. Mm. Like a bit of BMX, a bit of mountain bike. It's called mountain bike trials. Like a bit of BMX, a bit of mountain bike, a bit of yeah. downhill maybe. If, a, a if, bit I, of, if, I, if I rode the bikes like you guys ride, I'd it'd be set up totally different of to the course. way you guys yeah. would. You, would... You, we're working on getting <laughs> street working, bikes, Yeah, mate. literally, we've got You've... a couple of street Don't bike worry. projects coming in. I miss, <laughs> I miss the ability to be able to do a manual, any form of a spin, yeah. so, and just being able to link stuff together. I've like, only, I hate the fact that I was inconsistent with foot jam tail whips, and I just want to be able to do them every time. <laughs> so it's one of those things. That's, that's... That, that's the other thing. I've not <laughs> ever wanted to go down that road like all the other lads are doing now. Yeah. Maybe it's because of my age and I've got older and I don't have the time or want to do it. But it's, I've always stuck with the roots of what my riding's been over the years. Mm. I've never wanted to do like a tail whip or a bar spin or any of these new yeah. tricks that these young lads are doing now. And I think it's amazing what they're doing. And I wonder what the sport's going to be like in another five years or 10 years time. Yeah, yeah true. Like how, how big is both kind of right, like proper comp riding and street trials are going to go. Yeah. You know, you know, we're blurring the lines as time goes on. I like to think, it's, even though they go, they, even though there are two extremes, like the bikes get way more extreme and way more street. Yeah. There's still blurred lines. That's the thing. The head angles, the geometry of the bikes, yeah. the wheel sizes, 24 definitely put a big part of it into trials when they changed, you know, when they brought that, size wheel yeah, out it yeah. was like well it's a whole new thing the bikes feel you know easier to flick around do certain moves it was just a new thing which you know is still growing now which is brilliant yeah, yeah. 
and you know, never let your bike hold you back or think, oh, if I haven't got a comp bike or I've got to do that, <laughs> you know. I was in that same same category as John at that competition, yeah. <laughs> and I've oh, got you a were? more yeah, I've got a more comp oh, style were? bike, yeah, and oh, yeah, and of course were. we all got trashed. He's there on his on the twenty four street bike, you know, bike make four street. Maybe you guys need a crossover. Yeah, this is the, it. Maybe I need a seat so I can sort of just chill out halfway through the section, you know? I wonder if yeah. now we realise, can we just enter each category but on a different bike? So it'd be like, oh, I'll try and do blue on a... Like a pit know, stop midway, but oh, I'll get yeah. my uh, my street it's Definitely, bike but out, when yeah. I watched... I didn't watch the whole comp, but the odd time I saw you, John, I'm thinking, that's so much harder, mate. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Like, that was my fair thinking, play, being yeah. like, fair play. I would have borrowed my mate's bike. Like. There, were, there were a few like there, there weren't like that's the thing i look at stuff more these days like even the smallest things i think there was a rock which was like waist height which mm. you had to bunny hop up onto halfway through a section and i went to bunny hop it the way i do normally and it just didn't feel like a normal bunny hop because i put a longer stem on right yeah, yeah. and it's like that's why i think so many people like on your like when i see jack carthy bunny hop his bike it's like he's got so used to the way his bike moves yeah yeah he's able to bunny hop it even though those bars are so far forward and down well yeah. it's like coming from it's... a bmx to like your bike like that yeah. would be ridiculous like anyone who's been riding yeah, the bmx actually. jumps on a that's a good street point. trials bike they end up like too far over the front and kind of front flip yeah almost. i i ride with like dave kerr sometimes because he's just down the road and oh nice right, yeah. another local does that mean gawthorpe oh and gawthorpe's not far away from you then because he's lived <sighs> in south wales isn't he i think yeah is he, is he he north? Might, is, maybe i'm wrong but sorry yeah so you're, you're near dave kerr as well and you ride with him quite a bit oh you mean um ewan sorry Osborne. owen owen gawthorpe oh, Oh right, sorry. Uh, he lives in now. Uh, no, I don't think he's that far, but I haven't actually rode with him before. Oh, we've well, got another um, Welsh rider, Iwin Owen. This is yeah. a, I know they're two separate people. Dave, I don't know any other. I Welsh. think Dave's rode with him quite a lot, but I haven't. Like we've got you and Osborne down the road, and yes. Andrew McCabe. Um, but I've moved like forty minutes out of Porthcawl. Okay, so I'm a little bit further along. Um, Closer to Swansea. Some well-known locals, though, which is quite nice. That's yeah, this, yeah. what gets so, you out, like, isn't it? Well, I was saying, uh, I, I've rode with Dave Kerr a few times, and you, I try and see how he tries to bunny hop his bike, and it's like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that makes no... Yeah, I can't quite... Uh... I just don't know how people can even try and do it on those long bikes. There's just... It's just so I, much I time, like, between when you pull the bars yeah, and here, when you to get here. to there... It's yeah. just like, is it going to go? Is it going to go? Is it going to go? You're There's gonna... the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like the and leverage, it... you know, when you've got long arms. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's weird. That's why I think I've always stuck with this kind of bike, yeah. like 26 inch. Now I'm on. Um, so we've got um, part of the podcast. Um, it's my we go through part. some regular parts of the podcast. Maybe unleash some old dirt and things. We've got some pictures of you, John. Um, just want oh, you nice. to tell us a little bit about these. <laughs> Uh, if anyone's wow. listening, we will put these on the Instagram so you can see uh, exactly what we're referring to. So we'll or if you're on first. YouTube. So there's a first one here. And we'll share this one here first. You can just describe it all, where it Give is. Give some context what's there. What's happening. Oh, man. John. Um, you've got like a kid's megaphone. Um, the megaphone Stone looks like it matches your jacket. Like, what? wow. It's starting to thin out a bit there as well. <laughs> <laughs> you do look quite young, I must say. Now... Yeah. Would you have any incline? Uh, we know where that is. That's Bristol. We can tell that's yeah. Lloyd's. Yeah. Do you know when that might be? <sighs> when? Um, yeah, when would that be? <laughs> what, what, year or? Yeah. Uh, no. Sorry, I mean, a general year or um, if you can give us the exact date I and think, time, even better. <laughs> I think I was riding my Leeson 24 back then, I think. Yeah. I was trying to think when when that when we actually captured that picture, but I don't um, know what year it was though. This picture is, um, of course, courtesy of Nick Goddard, Glass Eye Trials. Yes, thank you, Glass Eye Trials, for the images there from Nick. Probably Goddard. around two thousand six or seven. So before we were even riding, Tom. No, I'd have been riding about that. I don't think I was. I started about that. I started two thousand seven. Two thousand five. So, two thousand six. Yeah, yeah mine was two thousand seven. Like. But wow, mate! I mean, I don't know what's what's the what's with this megaphone. What is going on when this was I captured? Think, 
I think one of us just randomly had it. I think Johnny Jones was there with it oh, as well. And yeah. I can't remember. It he was, might have been... Because yeah, um... Johnny and Nick were always filming, both of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think we just found it. Just I did, to... I, this is a video, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's a clip yeah, of a video. It actually yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I said. Or... <laughs> People <laughs> want to watch the actual clip. You can head over to yeah. Glass Eye Trials on Instagram, and that clip is there. Um, we'll share this other one with you that I quite like, um, just for some context. Firstly, oh. he's crying. Not sure why you're crying. Nah, you're probably not. What... <laughs> nah. Sweat in the eyes. What, what's Sweating going on, John? Eyes. What's that? <laughs> so, what's it? What is it? What's going on? Is it just sweat in the eyes? Is it? Uh, sweat in the eyes. Yeah. Okay, that's what they all say when they don't make a side uh, up. <laughs> I was. I think I was trying to film a line for Get Two. Um, it was a line in Bristol where it was a bunny hop up onto a wall, but you bunny hopped it, manualed, and then hopped 90 up onto a little ledge and then down onto, gap down onto another ledge and then 180 See, off. It's already sound too creative for us, isn't it? That's yeah. one thing. I mean, you guys can get much more creative than we can. Yeah. Um, I, did, I did like those gloves, though. I wish I could still get them. I mean, you I can. Would yeah, you I still you buy them still. actually? Hebo ones. Uh, yeah, yeah, the Hebo. They're H-E-P-O. actual like proper motorbike trials yeah. company, yeah. aren't they? Um, but I will say to everyone, if you ever see that clip, I'm sorry I'm not wearing a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's that the other clip's thing. That also on well, the Instagram of Glass I will say, trials. well said, John, because that is, uh, yeah. you it's, know. It was around the time where you're probably like. Still questioning whether it was cool or not. Yeah, and it was. It, yeah. I like to think now we have a really. My headphone just jumped out. I think now we have a really, really good group of people that just Yeah, respect. we're always uh, telling people what they should be doing these days, especially uh, wearing a helmet constantly yeah. when you're out. What's well, the, the one thing I do love about trials is that it kind of it's the most controlled in terms of crashing or whatever. So, i.e., when you like I said earlier, mountain biking you crash at speed, but we're all still like it's quite a good helmet culture. Everyone wears. Lid. Anyone who doesn't wear a helmet is generally disrespected. And hence yeah. why, like John just said then, he just says, everyone, like, if you watch the clip, I have to apologise. <laughs> they yeah. won't wear a helmet, um, but I think... I, I did have a few of the lads back in the day, like, say, John, just wear your helmet. It's like, why? Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, I liked it. Now, when I was a kid, I would say the same thing, but... yeah. Yeah, definitely it's, now it's one Especially of when we were filming, you know, I think probably Nick put something at the beginning or the end of the DVDs just to say, yeah, we're professionals in a way and we know what we're doing, uh, but don't do this without wearing, you know. The same yeah, thing. yeah, it's like you can watch this, but I wouldn't do the same yeah, thing. Um, yeah. I mean, it was confusing, actually. I thought you were wearing a helmet, but I realised that's hair, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wearing my helmet Those right are, now. Um, <laughs> Those that don't know John, he's wearing a hat, but um, he doesn't have any hair now, does he? Right. So um, that's what adulthood can do to you. Uh, the yeah. stresses of the Get DVD and all those lines he couldn't couldn't quite yeah. get to. Um, he lost Nick, all his hair. Nick, Nick stresses us out for probably about eight years of filming one and two. <laughs> <laughs> so um, and one of, well, one of no, the only. You can stop it. The only trials rider, correct me if I'm wrong, that still rides trials from a Get DVD. Uh, no, this is why I might be wrong. Who's in the Get DVD that still? Oh, well, Andre Burton's in there a couple of times, and he has You've got Sam Wheeler Gap. that's yeah, just come into light. <laughs> Sam Wheeler. So he's Wheeler. Back. Okay, Wheeler. cool. We, we yeah, can we can take these off now. He's back. He's Good. back. Um, yeah, but you say back. John never stopped. Oh, True. you mean constantly well, go through. Okay. Yeah, who's still... Yeah, we should say who is still riding, who never stopped when they did get, and it's only you. Well, I think maybe the only other one is Ali C. He had a few little bits. He did. Yeah. Uh, apologies, Ali. I'd like to think that he will start listening to our shows. Um, yes, Ali C and I yourself. The only... Who's kind of made a career out of it in a way. Um yes. I think he, like everyone else I can think of, like Bessel, Porter, they've just... Um, Either got a road bike or had a child. Yeah. 
<laughs> is that this? Or both, Joe well, Which Mark. one? <laughs> yeah, it was Joe yeah. Mark, yeah. Next, next time we have an interview on here, there'll be one running around me. Yeah, that's the thing. We're like, uh, t- John Shrewsbury 2.0. He's like, yeah, I've been busy, lads. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, 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 it's really good. But it's, it's, it's still nice to know, mate. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a tough... It's a tough sport. I think any sport really to, to really commit. I think, I think for it's a long just. Time. I don't know. Like not everyone, you know, has got to that point where they, you know, a lot of people have got a career and everything. You know, I work a lot. Um, my partner does. Um, but there's, you've got to always have time for yourself. Yeah. You've got to be able to have something that you've enjoyed since you were a young lad or or girl really doesn't make any difference yeah. we've got women you've got to let loose a little bit in the and... sport as well um but yeah it's like as i've got older i've kept myself fit and healthy um as much as i can but in doing that still doing the sport at the same time yeah. but yeah it's, it's um... well on that note i mean i was saying to matt off air um i'd say one word because I've, I've obviously didn't I haven't ridden with you too much, but when I have seen you for all the videos and stuff that goes up on <laughs> online and that, the one word, and I want to see what your reaction to this, that I would describe your riding, and it could be your personality as well. Not I think just it, riding. It yeah, does I extend think... your person, And I'd say is meticulous. Yes. In terms of sort of how sort of clean your lines are, how you yeah. present yourself as a rider. You've never and come with... Uh, presumably uh, as a person. Probably how like everything Nick and Johnny have like, taken on board that I've always wanted stuff to be kind yeah. of perfect because perfectionists. Not, it, yeah. yeah. It, I think that's the one like with anyone putting an Instagram clip up these days, you'll get your friend to refilm it. Like I've got my mate Luke who lives in Port Call, mm-hmm. um, Luke Jones. And I was out with him the other day and I was like, can you film this on your phone and then send it to me? Probably 20 or 30 clips later. <laughs> Yeah, it's, everything has to be well, perfect. I'm happy with that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 because I can't get it any more perfect. Because that that is what you... like. It's I watch a lot of BMX, mm. I do. And it's the only thing that kind of gets me in the mood to ride these days. Interesting. That's cool, it's, yeah. It's something over the years that I've kind of gone into that kind of discipline. I've got a BMX as well, but I haven't rode it enough because mm. nothing is open. Mm. No indoor parks or even outdoor ones aren't allowed yeah. to be in. Um, but you can kind of find lines or ideas through other sports. So BMX has been one of those, which I kind of took on a few years back, probably around the time I started riding 24, because it was kind of close to that wheel size. Yeah. And you not many miles away from each linked. other. Yeah. And that, watching that has helped a lot um up till now and i still share loads of bmx videos online and stuff on facebook and stuff just like mm. even people that don't ride bmx or watch it they're like well that's insane yeah and it's but, one of those things you'd often see a rider do the same trick they'd land it every time like yeah they could do it it's, but it's more it's, so like that one was way nicer with they trials. Landed two wheels was it yeah with on? trials we're like he's made yeah. the gap he's there There's, there isn't much more you're going to do with that yeah <laughs> the annoying thing is is you you do it the line first time and then you say can you film this for me and you can never get it again yeah, yeah. it's always perfect first time and it's yeah. like oh we've learned right. to get the camera but it, it definitely shows in your riding but i think even when you turn up like the way that you present yourself for riding like you know how you dress in that it kind of, you never had a mismatch of t-shirt and shoes on your bike or something this is my example yeah, being like, you go the whole way <laughs> yeah. like without well, even just, realizing we just slam like a t-shirt on and you've got some crappy sh- shorts or something you think oh, that'll yeah. do i'm going riding but i think for you it's definitely like a whole a ritual it's, maybe. Uh, yeah, you do like, it without realizing. I, I, is my I point. love that because that's Probably. kind of like your identity. That is what you've always given the the trial. I'm always here. constantly wearing a hat now because I've got no hair, but... <laughs> and it's cold. <laughs> yeah, but you can cold. also see like see what Tom was saying in your riding, in the way that yeah. you're trying to present yourself. It's like well, it's, that's not I perfect. Think, I can be better. I, f- I think yeah. If like you'll see a trials rider like Jack or Charlie, they'll just wear what they would wear to a comp or something. Yeah. If you're like a going out and riding like rocks or street riding you want to feel as comfortable wearing what you want as well as 
riding what you want mm -hmm. so as if that combination works then you're happy you know you, yeah i'm not going to start wearing really baggy <laughs> jeans like no. I did, like, <laughs> no i mean the 20 keys. years ago or something <laughs> like that i'm not going to get it because people do do that now they're going back to what the ninth the start of the 90s was like and it's like well you're how old uh, yeah. I wonder that if in the future when people like take photos they're like where was that from the 90s no that was just 2020's resurgence yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, yeah. The Linkin Park and all of that and yeah. it's like nope he's yeah. been watching too much Stranger Things he definitely was yeah. from the 80s I thought I just I thought that was the only reason that skinny jeans came in because all the trials riders were like oh you know we better wear these because they get caught in the free will so I started buying yeah. skinny jeans to ride trials and then all of a sudden One Direction came out and we were like the well that's the thing you like saw <laughs> skinny jeans on a guy and you're like Oh, I'm gonna nick them off my sister, you know, because she's. The I only put one them on to wear trials. It was like there was tights. a really weird time and in now... history when skinny jeans was like, what? You can I wear know, skinny jeans. Like, I what think the hell? looking back at it now, well, like, I don't have any pair of jeans that aren't skinny jeans. Yeah. But when we were kids, it's like, oh, I only wore skinny jeans when I rode my trials bike because they yeah. were girls. You go into <laughs> Levi's or Topman, you're like, uh, boot cut, no, that fit, no. Ah, skinny, there Our, we go, that's uh, me. A famous ambassador, Chris Jackson, I'm calling you out now, he he wears men's, uh, sorry, women's. women's jeans to ride in. Well, yeah, you don't get ripped off. Men's, right. women's, doesn't really matter, does yeah, it? Yeah, I suppose, nowadays skinny, it doesn't matter, does it? It depends price. where he gets them from, where, where it's cheap <laughs> enough to buy them. But you're right, anyway, the bottom line, whatever yeah. you feel most comfortable in, if that means you yeah. feel comfortable looking your best, then you go and look your best, you know? Uh, just run it from that way, however however anyone wants to be. Um, one that we haven't touched base on um, is sponsors of yourself. Now, I actually don't really know too much about your, your journey and support over the years, but I wondered if we could go into a little bit about maybe how the start, maybe where you're at now or where it might be um, going. And I, he's think, I think the first time I started to get some kind of thing was probably through like when I first had the Ashton 24, mm. that was probably, well, before that I had an Ashton justice that was kind of semi used by Tim Pratt, which he yeah. rode. And then Martin came to me when I was at a comp, one day he was there. I think he was either riding or following around with Gavin Bedford because he was there and he gave me this justice frame that was used, but mm. um, yeah, I, I built it up and then had the 24 prototype bike. And then I think I bought my first Ashton Eddie tongue frame. And then later on, a few years later, I think I started working with Leeson and I think I had 126 off him yeah. to try out. Yeah. So it was kind of more to do with testing stuff than actual sponsorship. Which is what that. real, to me, that's what a sponsorship yeah. should be. Um, you know, oh, yeah. we've just made this. Go and ride it. Yeah. Show the people. Oh. Like you're the rider. You're the person that knows how to ride it. So that's yeah. the biggest. Yeah. Like I think we, we had quite, me and Gavin Bedford, we had really good opportunities because we were literally on Martin's doorstep. Mm. And it was good probably probably the way he saw it was i got these young lads you know they got bikes but you know he probably wanted us to promote him a bit more mm. so even though the ashton eddie tongue frame was at the prototype i did keep that hush hush no one knew about that and it's only probably now that i've actually spoke about it and there is an odd photo somewhere mm. of it somewhere which i'll have to find um the very first one but then i think a few years later i started working with inspired and had the inspired four plays which were the very first ones which you've probably seen matt staples on one and then danny mccaskill had one but i had one which became the production model the very yeah. first one you had one. one before danny mccaskill yeah basically. it was that's why i'm making it sure that clear to everyone photo, else like yeah it was john is the original <laughs> yeah <laughs> sorry they, john. they had the prototypes and then i had the actual production one as well as he did um, yeah. but that last photo that you just put up that was the one the first four player i ever had uh which was inspired and then i had a few more after that um, no wait so they actually i thought you can correct me now i didn't know the year that inspired fully started because i thought it was sort of like 2009 10 well you just said matt staples and i thought yeah. he was a bit out of the game he for, he had for one for a little i think he had because i've seen a few videos that he had one with magiras on and then at some point v brakes 
and then Danny McCaskill had one where a few photos have cropped up with a black frame and mm, yeah. I think steel Curtis forks or something you had on it. Um, those were the two prototypes. And then Inspired brought out their production ones. I think it was a black one that we had, which it was in that photo. And mm. then I think I had a brown one and then a dark green, like race racing green one. Yeah. And these are, st- are they steel at this time? No, Alan, they, they were still, they were Alley, right? Because I wasn't well, sure yeah, if they started yeah. on a steel, sorry. It was, it was around the time, I think, when they brought out the brown one. Oh, no, they did, when they brought out the black one, they started doing forks to go with them. Right. And if you go online, you can find, I think, they did a black and a white one version. Um, and then a few different colours later on. And then they started bringing out the inspired hex. So I started riding that instead. It was nice to go back to a 26 after riding all these 24s. Mm. And I really wanted one. So I had a red one. And then I think not long after that, they changed the geometry, made them slightly longer. And I think I had a green one and then went back to another short one again. It it all started to develop and change. I think Ali C was on a red one for a little while. Um, And then after... At some point, everyone started using disc brakes front and back. And I did start to use... I never wanted to run disc brakes at one point. It was heavier, it was, wasn't it? And you're more likely to damage well, it. And I, <laughs> The reason I didn't want to run them, I found them a bit too delicate in a way. Hmm. I don't know. It was okay, just... Okay, yeah, uh, interesting. It's, yeah. it's a bit of a weird situation because I always ran V-brakes years hmm. ago, then went to Magira's, and then some people started using disc brakes, and I think I was just worried I was going to bend these rotors, <laughs> even though I side-hopped the other way. I was like... <laughs> They were they they seemed like they were so expensive and delicate in a way that I didn't want to run them. But then I did when I went to a hex. I started running a disc brake on the front, and then later on I went to a merino. I started getting a proper sponsorship through him, where I could design the frame and he would ship them over. And so that was customized geometry to yeah, yourself, basically. So I merino think, were like, send us your numbers, yeah, and we'll make it I for think, you. That was the point where I was at. I was like, right, I everyone was getting disc brakes on the backs of their bikes, mm. and I was like, I want my own frame with a disc on the back. Yeah. I kind of dolged in getting a dismount, dismount put on my Inspired Hex. I think Josh Leach, he welded one on the back for me. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't <laughs> surprise me, and yeah. He did a really good job of it, even though it had, like, carbon wrap on it. I sprayed it all black, oh. and it, it looked good. Yeah, it sounds, I mean, yeah, it really does. It sounds I've, cool, man. I've still got the frame now because I didn't want to get rid of it because it was showing what bikes could be. At, so at unique, all. mate. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So I kind of finished with inspired did that to my frame had that for a little while and then i went from those aluminium frames to uh getting in touch with merino and getting my own geometry designed different head angle steeper head angle shorter chain stays that's a that's a biker's dream mate you're telling somebody oh i want this job like they're building it for you that i mean that's incredible so what is your geometry what works for you what in a bike you know just talk it, us it's well at the moment i'm currently riding uh an extension 24 i have got but craig lee scott is actually borrowing it at the moment because yeah he wants to try it <laughs> CLS. Um, for those. so i gave it to him at the end of the summer to try out i rode it a few times through the summer and at the moment i'm i'm on uh i was on a merino for a little while uh, and then I'm actually on an inspired hex at the moment that I've just stripped uh, silver. It's just raw because. Sorry, sorry, I just cool. want to say, what's it got to have though? Like, if you, is it going to be like, oh, I yeah. can't ride that bottom bracket um, rise? I've got to have this minimum, this wheelbase. It, it's kind of got to have like uh, really short back end. Okay. So okay. you can so you can bunny hop it straight up to back wheel. Maybe a plus 20, maybe a plus 25. I did have okay. 25, 30 on my Merino, which made it more easier to ride natural, which kind of helped with a higher bottom bracket, yeah. like on your bikes. Yeah. And that kind of helped really well. Um, I did have a steep head angle on that for a little while, but I've kind of gone back to a sl- slacker head angle on this other bike. But yeah, I'm working with extension at the moment to bring out um, 
a 26. And that is so. your current sort of sponsor now is uh, extension yeah, we're, bikes. Yeah, we're kind of, we haven't fully advertised it or anything because I, we've been waiting on that bike to be coming through at some point. But it's, yeah, it is it is there. It's in the making at the moment. So hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe this time of this, this side of this year, we might see a frame. If not, it'll probably have to be next year. But it's in the process. It's working towards, it's wicked, yeah. towards that. Yeah, 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 yeah man. So we do some usual things on this podcast, and it's the quick fire round. Hopefully, we do it quite quickly today, Matt. Would it's you, supposed we, to be the quick fire round. It, <laughs> we draw it out, and it becomes a whole episode, and then sometimes we forget to do the rest of it altogether. <laughs> um, so we we're going to start with your favourite spot, John. If you could be plonked anywhere in the world to ride, where would it be? It'd be nice if you asked two spots, but <laughs> that's fine. If you want to give yeah. two, that's um, okay. This is your episode, John. I would say uh, Porth Core is always going to be the one place because it's where a lot of riders have been. It's quite a, it's got quite a good heritage kind of place for, you know, Martin Ashton and Martin Hawes, where they first started riding. I first met them. Um, that's definitely the best, yeah. like, place to go where we used to have a lot of people and probably if i had to pick a second spot i would probably i think barcelona for street no i think that was one of the first we've had i thought you were going to say bristol you were like <laughs> boop, boop, boop. Barcelona. I, I, I probably would <laughs> put it in a top 10 if i had to. yeah yeah bristol barcelona is an hour away from me and it's not that far. So, you said that's one of the first yeah. we've had for Barcelona. Yeah. I think that's the third one we've had for Barcelona. Oh, isn't? Who yeah. else said Spain? Oh, they might have said Sp- <laughs> that's. Oh, right. Yeah, but like, you know, yeah, specifically just saying Barcelona. I was like, oh, Barcelona. M- mainly it's, because I'm oh, still, specifically Barcelona, yeah. we are wanting to do it, you know, everyone do a trip this year. Hopefully yeah. every guest it, that we've had, yeah. we'd love them to be coming along and do I, a whole show. I really thing. wish I went on that trip that happened last year. Yes. I was like, I had two other mates that wanted to go, and I was like, oh, "I'm not sure." Uh, we're hoping, yeah. we're hoping to do some other trips. It's not, yeah, you know, they would have more would have happened sooner. Now, you know, the the UK trials tour that uh, Steve yeah. Rogers was setting up got sort of postponed. So I know, yeah, there's some gonna... pretty pretty good ones um, to come. So you're in your, your you're in your favourite spot. Let's just say he's in Porth Crawl right now. Yeah, Porth Crawl or, or Barcelona, one of the yeah. two, and. Who would you want to be riding with? Well, there's, there's two ways to do this question. Who is kind of like your biggest inspiration? You know, if they turned up there and you was like, oh my God, like such and such turned up. And then number two is who would you just kind of just ride with every day that would kind of G you up and get you Because they're the people that help you progress, really. I think if I had to pick back in the day when I was riding, it would probably be... A- any of my idols growing up. So I'd probably say Eddie Tongue as yeah. one of the one because of the nice. way he rode. We didn't have a lot of to see of him, mm-hmm. but you could just tell from I think one year went to NAS Festival. Yeah. If you remember Yeah, that. yeah. I yeah. went twenty third thirteen or twelve, I think. <laughs> and yeah. he just turned up riding this kind of like mid blue, purpley kind of pashley. And the stuff that I saw him do was just insane, just on yeah. this little ramp and stuff. And then if it was a rider now, <laughs> if he was still around, I'd have to say Gavin Bedford. He was one yeah. of the guys that helped me with my riding a lot, especially the competitive side of it, like in comps. Mm. You would not see him stop trying this one side hop or gap until we got it you know it's it was always in his blood to want to be really good or better than anyone else and you wouldn't have been able to take that away from him he was a brilliant rider and a brilliant friend and i wouldn't want anyone else awesome yeah that's a great answer man really. yeah he's, he's such a good rider and, and, and it's those people that have the biggest and best influence yeah on i think that that's kind of why i wanted to say a bit about him because you know his rider if he was still around now riding yeah. it, it, and he was still doing trials he would be insane I, you know he'd probably be not far off maybe from what jack's like in some way or he'd be still like 
similar to any other rider or just excelling he'd just be excelling on another level mate yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. that's it is a it is a wonder when so many people stop and you think oh you know what would they have been been like um yeah so you're you're there in fourth call fourth call fourth crawl call call. call. i I say it wrong what did i don't know fourth crawl call Fourth call. Fourth call. C A W. I just mentally toss a coin in my head. Is <laughs> which way I want to say it. Yeah, let's say you're riding call, with Gavin. Or Barcelona, right? Or Barcelona. You're, you're riding with Gavin now. You guys are having an awesome session. What would be your one move? What is the, the John Shrewsbury move? Uh, the end of time. Well, we might have to give him um, a line. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can't just do yeah, it. I yeah. think that's that's what I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I think. I think any kind of like any move that looks cool. I think I've always liked, like we've got these sea defense walls on the beach yeah. down near us. I think anything like a man, like a wall ride one eighty out because the walls are quite slanted. Mm. I think anything like a wall ride one eighty out is probably the best thing, or anything close enough to that. Yeah, it's super. Uh, I've got to say, their discipline. Those who are listening to us, and we've got yeah. we've got John on the show. It was it is trials biking. You guys are riding trials. Yeah, but I can't. We always can't ride in the too... same places. We still I do. Get... Yeah, um, I can't get too technical with it. Just to say, yeah. So well, any other? Yeah, exactly. Well, other people just turn around and go to the side up. You know, you just jump to the yeah, side. But yeah. you guys would do that to do something else. Yeah, to something yeah, else to something else. Yeah, it's so, you know you combine all these kind of moves these days. If it, 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 what I'd like to do is just spend a week somewhere. Like if I we could go to Barcelona, mm. even spending a week there, it's insane. You want to spend more than a week. You want to spend a month out there just to find something to ride. Well, and we'll I'm just get an Airbnb there. for one month, shall we? Just that's, get yeah, that's good to me. Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll book it for a month and get different people to come in those weeks, and we'll just yeah. charge them and be like, yeah, come on, let's go, let's go. No, that'd be. Yeah, a, tell yeah. them that's our business model. That's our plan. <laughs> well, we, we, we wouldn't make anything, but it would be. It would be but good. that does sound awesome. And in the weather, is, yeah, you just can't beat it. Then. Yeah, yeah. There's um. So, mate, that's that's awesome. I mean, you've got you know you've got your favorite rider, your favorite moves, and there's one thing um. As a, a rider who rides a sort of 24 inch discipline, I, I would say whatever you want to call it, street trials, we haven't really. 24, officially... 26, a bit of both. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I wanted to actually get your opinion on the Kruker's new street bike that's been brought out. Um, oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you've actually ridden it. You've might... I love that they've kept the head tube the same as their other frames, that kind of twist. Yeah. But from the numbers that you've read online or have you heard anything from someone who's got that experience, um, I want to know from you, what are your thoughts on Kruker's bringing that? Will to, it fly? Will, will it, it get, you know? Work? There's there's so many different brands out there, including that one, that's mm. starting to branch out and make a bike similar to, you know... Danny uh, Mac. We will use that word. Yeah, it's like, it's that's what they're looking can, at. Canyon done one for Fabio Woodmer, right? That's yeah, yeah, see, they, they didn't did, even make um, one until Fabio joined them. And that looks pretty yeah. intense. Anything Canyon <sighs> does is pretty Yeah, intense. it's... So, uh, I, I, nice. I think the bike... I, I quite like the colours they've done. I think yeah. the green is different. Mm. I think it's totally different to what, like, like, Inspired or Extension do. There's tons of different brands out there but i will always go back to i just want the raw chrome frame i'll always like yeah that. shiny blingy like... black fork on it black rims a saddle <laughs> yeah you know just those two colors sorry what was that a saddle what the hell was that yeah that... saddle oh, fuck knows. i don't know what that is but anyway yeah <laughs> no yeah, i think uh the green but the, i quite like that one the army green color yeah. looks quite nice what is because I actually don't know, so I'm genuinely asking. Like, in comparison to kind of the inspired bikes, how different is that? Well, the colours or the the way more the so like are. the jo- I don't I need to check the, yeah, geometry, the geometry off the top like, of my head. Would but... you look at that and go, "No, I'd rather have an inspired or no, I'd rather have an extension." It, it's it depends on how it rides, I think. Yeah, because I've rode a lot of different bikes over the years, but it only took me up till a certain age to understand geometries of bikes and know what felt good and what didn't because mm. if you went back to a bike that i rode when i was probably 15 or something it would have such a low bottom bracket on it it would just feel like a cheap bike from like a second hand shop or something you yeah. know it would feel yeah. totally different compared to you know the steep head angles the weight the higher bottom bracket all of those combinations come up like I, that's why i kind of 
rode a merino with a higher bottom bracket than what I was riding before with an inspired I probably put an extra five on the bottom bracket from plus 20 to 25 or yeah. it might have been 30 just to see what it'd feel like on the back wheel and it felt better so yeah. but yeah I think there's a lot you it's know this still is evolving this is what I mean it? Bikes are changing so much. I think Danny McCaskill or Fabio have got like the shortest bike wheelbase on theirs, which is like 990 or like a BMX. Like, yeah, like so that, that sign of, yeah. That's why you'll see like Danny Bunny hop up something which is taller than you guys or me it's to stupendous. back wheel. Yeah. Because the back end is so short and tight. It just goes bang. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. And you can. But it's like bikes now that have gone carbon fiber. It's like wow you know i've i've got the my bike here right now and i've just put carbon rims on it no like, carbon rims <laughs> okay tell and, us about what what rims are they uh i don't know if you can see can it we see it let's have a little goosey ganders there if you follow on youtube you can see john's bike right yeah. now <laughs> what's so that, that thing in the middle oh that's a seat oh, right yeah, sorry yeah, i didn't sorry. know what that was yeah go on so i've put on uh light bicycle rims that i yeah. managed to get off someone and i haven't rode it at all yet and so you've just looked at it <laughs> i've just looked at it <laughs> yeah so oh man well we're excited how much yeah. do they weigh then did you weigh them the rims no. you don't know <laughs> I just... no. what's the minute just for sure sheer pimpness is that why you've gone for that i was just like well if everything's starting to change quite a lot like frames and wheels why not get involved in it you know it's yeah. like, i'm so with you john i've i just I've, <laughs> yeah, I've got i i think i got to a point i was like all right i'm bored of my bike what can i change right i'll swap out every bolt and put titanium bolts in there instead That's the word meticulous comes to mind again yeah <laughs> well there is just there's some point, photos like, that we took it was just like Oh my, just that image of those rotor bolts. Actually, this was something we had to ask you. We thought about this earlier as well. Do you clean your bike? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Knew it. You had to actually clean. Because I was like, always looks good. Like, yeah. it's always... I don't know. Any like, you've got to have a showroom. It's, it's the only way it'll last longer in some True. Way, We're definitely, if Unless I... Unless you clean these parts and take them out, re-grease them, all of that. Definitely it want it to will never grease. run smoothly. What's grease? I don't know what grease is. <laughs> you, is that something that goes on threads? I mean, no. no. Next ride you're on, you'll just but, hear these pre creaks. <laughs> I think that's what my bars do every time I land. But no, but, that, yeah, it's I, a good um, point about the carbon thing you were saying because I think yeah, I think like 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 Jack and uh, Charlie and that you know and loads of other lads they're all running carbon what forks and handlebars is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the most common. And, and, well, Jack posted on his Instagram the other day that he's been riding for Krukers uh, six years. And yeah. obviously he gets different sets of forks, but he's never, never. snapped or cracked a no. set of... Krukers forks. And he's, he used to go through alleys like well, yeah. anything, supposedly. Well, yeah. it's, it's a bit like me, really. If I've got like... If I know I've been running a set of handlebars for about a year or maybe a little bit longer, I'll swap them out because I'm worried that they will break. Yeah, that's where we're all different, aren't we? Wait till they all we'll run them yeah. into the ground. <laughs> well, I've had my Echo yeah. Urbans for like nearly think... 10 years in forks. <laughs> I think my yeah. chain's and two every years. Every time I do a front up, I think, I haven't changed these for the most yeah. piddliest forks. I never learned to do them. <laughs> <laughs> it is um, dangerous, but it's a trend. You know, they're setting the trend, yeah, John. It, it's, it, it was always going to come around at some point. It's like, well, I've got an opportunity here. I um, managed to get hold of a pair before Brexit because if I was going to get them, oh, they would have lost wow. a lot for postage. Don't <laughs> remind me already because my, my, yeah, I think my, I've got a frame or some forks coming from Europe that are um, ridiculous. But what I was going to say then is we've had carbon bars for a while. I've jumped into that carbon. Are you jinxing world. it for us, Matt? No, I'm not. It. I'm not jinxing anything. My bars are fine. I've only in the last week been like, oh, God, this guy's only... F I'm going to have to get carbon forks. So, of course, I've been uh, on yeah. the phone to the sponsor. Hey, what are you going to give me? Come on. Ben's like, uh, I'll call you back. How much? I'll call you back. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking now everyone's brain watching this is going to be like, oh, I've been running my forks for about probably five years <laughs> i've had my or, handlebars for eight less. years and john probably, changes his every year it's Let probably us... time to change them 
let us know how long the longest component on your bike is and how long you've been running it for. Be really interested to know. Yeah. Yeah, that would. Do you actually, do you even know what, what is the longest part you've had or you just change them every year? Um, This bike, I think, if there's anything on it that I've ran, it's probably the saddle. <laughs> the what? <laughs> <laughs> the bit again. Do, do you even sit on it? Like? Do, do you sit well, on when it? you're chilling, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I guess I that's... I think that good. is, it's the only, I think it's the shape of it. I've never like I've never wanted a padded saddle because then there's just more weight there with the padding in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because um like the Ashton bikes were the only trials bikes that I were close that. to a real I trials love that. bike. I love that. Because yeah. of the whole scoop. And that was them being like, yeah. Well, that's what trials bikes are. So. Still got a few of them. Has anyone so... got a twenty inch? Have you got a twenty inch? Didn't they make? Ashton. Didn't they make an Ashton twenty inch? Yeah, they did. Yeah, I've got. I've it's... still got uh, the Ashton Mark One. I think I've got two of them, and then I've got wow. a Mark Two as well. So I have still got one or two, but they've probably been the paint's gone. I've sprayed them black or something like that. But, if anyone has yeah, a they twenty, did, they did I'm do, really interested yeah. to get the twenty. That they did do nice. a twenty inch. Um, Gavin did have one for a little while, um, but it never got to a point that it grew on. I think it was mm. just. They just did it to a certain point that a few because they were really had it, popular. A lot of people had the, the twenty six. Yeah, I did see been. one or two on eBay a few months back. There were a few of them. We'll have to keep yeah. our, our eyes open. But is is Martin still close? I mean, you don't live there anymore. Are you still close with Martin? Have you spoke with him at all? Um, I saw him last year. I think towards the end of the summer. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Yeah, we don't see a lot of each other. We, he does pass sometimes if we're out on the bike on the seafront or yeah. somewhere and, and says hello. Um, but yeah, we, you know, we still, I believe we're still, you know, mutual. Friends. And if he sees you, yeah, he'll yeah, still yeah. be friends. So, yeah, well, same with Martin Hawes as well. Tend to speak to him sometimes online or just. If he's down, then he'll keeping, come out for a little ride as well. So yeah, it's yeah, good. keeping that conversation. Um, I, I. I have met Martin. I've luckily was lucky enough to spend a bit of time with him. But the next time you see him, um, he does follow me on Twitter, um, yeah. but he hasn't replied to my my message because, of course, <laughs> we want to get him on the show. Well, not us. <laughs> Everyone wants him. Everyone wants him on the show. Him on the show. Every oh, yeah, trials definitely. bike um, wants them on the show. So, so if someone sent this to Martin, I've, 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 I've you follow me on Inst- on Twitter, mate. He followed me, so I thought, oh, I've got direct messaging. But slide into his DMs. I slid into those DMs. Nothing yet. Um, I just wanted to share that story I've, I've thrown up in front of him once we got drunk so it, it, it's, it, there's a lot of stories to be told with Martin and um, point being if you do bump into him tell yeah. him about your show get him to give it a listen and he'll hear us right now going come on Martin we need you I think that would be <laughs> awesome to get some of the uh, yeah. Yeah, older guys back Who, on it as well as... Uh, that's one of the requirements as well as being and on I the hope, podcast. I hope he says who... Well, we'll see, but um, yeah. there's another person you ride with sort of regularly, but we want to find out something. Yeah, there's say. a requirement of coming to the podcast is that you have to almost nominate someone or who do you think would be a good fit to come onto the Shindig podcast? Um, who do you want to see here? I did have a little think about it. I think because you've got, you said you've got Nick coming on at some point. He's been on. Um, he's but been he, on. he will be. So this would have, when yeah. this has come out, his would have already yeah. been out. But yeah. yes. Okay. Um, I think Johnny Jones. Because Johnny yeah. Jones, yes. He was quite a big part of the whole scene. Um, In terms of media, yeah. which is what yes. we are. Everyone yeah, watches Johnny he, Jones media. Yeah. Exactly. I think his videos him, are amazing. Yeah, I've worked with him quite closely with um, a few videos, and it's had its benefits from it. Just having that, you know, yeah. footage, you know, actually seeing because you would not see that riding unless it wasn't for him. Yeah, you know, everything that he has done for the sport. It's mainly around that. If Nick was out filming, he was filming, but he might have got something instead of Nick. So, well, it was at a yeah. time when filming and the internet was also primitive and very sacred. Yeah, and yes, filming you, was not on your phone, was it? Johnny, you relied yeah, upon people carry. with real cameras that, That's what that I mean. Johnny yeah. and Nick mm. had. They yeah. were the, the pioneers, be, really. They heavily, heavily invested into it. You know, this would have been quite expensive for them to, to do this, as expensive as. You know, yeah. us all riding our trials bike. So, yeah. yeah I think it'd be uh, yeah, a good little thing for him to 
get involved in. And... Oh, get him on the list now. That is a fresh yeah. name. If anyone else, you know, said someone they get on the tally, but yeah, get jo- get Johnny yeah. Jones on there for sure. But, yeah, he's, there's a lot of videos that he's done of big group rides, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure we awesome. can. I mean, that's what. I suppose, you know, it's our duty now. Those guys aren't really taking that time to, to do the media, so it might be up to us to, to, to take the baton. They, yeah, as, uh, they've paved the way and we're... Yes, um, so on. to speak. Not that DVDs are a thing anyway, but we'll make a featured film video, rather. And yeah. um, we'd love... I love the idea of getting the Get Boys back together for a picture or some funny <laughs> clips. That, that is something I've got written in my, my YouTube channel ideas, is a, a Get reunion, but whether... We'll come up with that. I think John will have a big part in that and you definitely have to help us get those riders. <laughs> so. Yeah, I, I've been trying to get Porter out as much as I could, but he's just like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave was, up some time ago now, I know. There was, yeah, there was a glimpse of him on Instagram riding uh, Pashley. <laughs> <laughs> Pashley, yeah. So he might be, maybe in the summer. I think it. Uh, it we were quite restricted this uh, last year to mm. try and get anywhere. So, but fingers crossed. Yeah, I might be able to get um, Craig Lee Scott out as well. Hopefully so. <laughs> yes, that is a, another guy. With uh, hopefully we'll come on and, and, and chat with him yeah. very soon as a as a close friend. We'll we'll yeah. leave you to put the good words in there for us, John. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, absolutely amazing show today with uh, Mr. Shrewsbury. I who, love that, John. Um, I think yeah. he's got a seat no, on his bike, good. hasn't he? I think you've got a seat. No, it's <laughs> a trials podcast. Is it a trial? We're oh, a trials podcast. We're a trials podcast. Of course he hasn't yeah. got a seat. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, um, as the start of a, a new trend, of course, trials is trials. There's so many of us. Whether you've got a seat or not, we don't fucking care. It's just good to, to get come on Come for a ride, chat. come for a chat. Hit some yeah. walls. So, Fingers crossed, we'll uh, get to ride sometime this year. Yeah, together. well, there we had some. We, we had a lot of good rides in 2020. There's a lot of faces that I've never personally rid with. Didn't think we'd and be we had able big, to. big ish group rides, almost a little bit like the old days. Some would say. Yeah. Well, you know, elites. The police said elites are allowed to train. So. You know, I would consider anyone do a back hop an elite cyclist. Yeah, to me, not every cyclist can do that. No, so that's or, elite. like someone looks at me and go, "Whoa!" You go, "That's because I'm elite, mate." <laughs> We're not riding in the elite category, though. No, are we? no, I no, don't no. know the the nuances they, they, of the of they competition. Don't, they don't need to know the comps. We're just known as elite <laughs> riders. But um, again, mate, thank you so much um, Cheers, for, yeah. for kicking oh, us off right. with that. We will have some uh, really nice other other riders with with seats. On Check out John on his Instagram for all of his media and what he's up to with on his what bike. What is your Instagram, John? So we don't get it wrong. Uh, I think it's uh, John Shrewsbury. <laughs> nice and easy there, John Shrewsbury on Instagram. All <laughs> be linked down below as well yeah thank you yeah. for tuning in once again we've been the right. shindig podcast new podcast out every single friday and do check out the youtube for our regular uploads and media of us riding our trials bikes i've been tom hutley and i've been matt pengelly that's been john shrewsbury thank you very much bye bye ah, you f-